Hey guys, Thomas the Slayer, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Captain Marvel. I know, I'm actually pretty close to on time with this one for once, I think. Hopefully. Anyways, before I can even begin this movie review, I'm gonna get that disclaimer right out of the way. I've seen some of the stupidity surrounding this movie, and no, I am not going to be unfairly judging the movie because of some stupid nonsense that doesn't make any sense anymore. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to avoid criticisms altogether. I'm going to judge this movie based on the things that happen in the movie and out of not some sort of preconceived feminism propaganda either. I don't think that is fair to the movie. I don't think that is fair to anyone. It never has been. It never will be. Period. There's no exceptions. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, Again, just also spoilers, I guess, because, <laughs> uh, whoops, uh, there are going to be spoilers, obviously. So, with that being said, if you have not seen the movie, please check it out first, uh, before checking out this review anyway, and then come back and then watch this review at your own discretion, or if you just don't care, then watch that review, I suppose. So... Before we begin this movie, or as we begin this movie, we get a nice uh, little uh, special uh, dedication to Stan Lee, which is a, a really nice touch. Uh, you usually have your Marvel begin with a uh, all the Stan, Stan Lee cameos, and of course, rest in peace, Stan Lee. You will obviously be missed. So, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about what actually happens and yes I always know it's gonna happen it happened in this movie and I do apologize in my notes I did just call her Marv for short and I do apologize but that is what I'm gonna refer to her as in this review and I do apologize in advance I know that's not her name uh, I think her name's like Carol I think that's her name and I think I wrote it at the end of my notes, so I do apologize if I just keep calling her Cap or Marv. I think Marv is better because Cap usually refers to Captain America. So, Marv it is. I think that will be what I referred to her as. Anyways, this movie has a bizarre start to say the very least. Uh, there's some, like, quick fading, and we're seeing, like, these really, like, her like fading in and out of something um and this appears to be some sort of uh, mariette of vision that we are getting whether that is a dream or something or other uh is quite clear that something along those lines are happening and she already at this point has a small burst of power so She's, like, looking down, and she's, like, being, uh, she's, like, talking to this guy, uh, like, I guess it's her boyfriend slash mentor, question mark? Yeah, that one's really weird. I, there seems to be some sort of chemistry between them, maybe? I don't know. There's never an explicit, like, kiss or anything of that nature, uh, that happens, so... I don't know. Uh, I don't know what their connection ends up being, other than they work together at, in some capacity. So I do apologize if not everything is made crystal clear. That is definitely one of the main issues I definitely want to pinpoint right now. Not everything is made crystal clear. This connection being one of them, and that is due to the sort of lack of character interaction, or rather, uh, there are character interactions, but some of them seem a little bit, like, they're kind of leaning, like, they're hinting, maybe, but then they're kind of also hinting that it just could be, like, ha, we're working together, haha. I don't know, like, again, the, there's this sort of bizarre vagueness in this, and what they do decide to explain uh, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit wonky. This movie is a little bit wonky. 
Uh, I think saying that this is a super solid movie is doing injustice to reviews. I'm going to say that much. I'm not saying it's a complete disaster by any means, but there's definitely quite a few issues here. Anywho. Uh, we, let's see, and, I, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be... Uh, losing track of where I am a lot. I did write a lot of mo uh, notes here. So, uh, she's like, they're on the train, uh, speaking with each other again. That vague banter between them, I don't know what it is still. Um, if there's any correlation with the comic, just tell me in the comments, because I don't know. I never read the comics. I'm also going to... I should have put that in the beginning as well. I've never read the comics. I don't know anything about Captain Marvel. I feel like I kind of understand Cap at least what this interpretation of Captain Marvel is supposed to be, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I think they did a, a decent job with her backstory, question mark. I don't know. We'll get there. Uh, so, anyways, uh, so they're going to, like, this facility place, uh, where, uh, she's, well, before they even get there, he's, like, telling her not to essentially let her emotions control her, because apparently her powers are based on her emotions, and again, I do think there is a bit of a discrepancy there since the acting. She seems to be more cheerful throughout the entire movie, or she she always gets to be in that place of like, hmm, I'm gonna be a bit snarky, just a bit, just a smidge of sm of, of snark, if you will. Uh, I do appreciate that much, but again, I don't think the explanation of her power made all that full sense in that regard. Um, I don't know. So, um, uh, so he's like saying anger is the enemy, blah, blah, blah. They're on the train. And they're, I, they're on some planet. I forget what it's called. I didn't write it down, unfortunately. Um, they're not on Earth yet. They are aliens. Uh, I do want to point that out, obviously. Uh, so, they're just chilling, doing their thing, uh, and he's, like, wanting her to control her power proper by not using her power, question mark, but kind of vaguely saying, like, I kind of want you to use your power anyway. It, again, that weird banter of, like, ha ha, um, and then he's, like, saying, you know, sort of cliche lines here and there, be the best version of yourself, I just heard that in the Kim Possible movie, which is something I didn't even review, by the way. Whoops. Sorry. If you wanted a, re a review of that, I kind of just watched it on my own time. Um, just to see what the heck it was going to be. Anywho, uh, we cut to, she talks to what I think they refer to as Supreme. I think that's what they call her. Um, and she gets transported via this blue stuff that, like, goes into her, and then she's, like, suddenly elsewhere, where that is, I'm not too sure, but she meets with what is called, uh, central intelligence, or just intelligence, like, there's some woman there, though, um, and, uh, she eventually, she essentially has this thing on her neck, that being Marv, or Car Carol, or whatever her name is, has this, like, device uh, that's on her, and I'm gonna say it, and this thing is stupid. It is stupid. I don't think there is an argument to say that this isn't stupid. It is fucking stupid, because later on in the movie, she just rips it off. That's it. At any point of the movie, she could have grabbed at her neck and ripped that thing off, but she never does until the very end of the movie. Like, what was preventing her from doing that earlier in the movie? Someone please tell me, because I do not know what was happening with that device thing that was going on. It is so stupid and contrived. There had to have been a better way to do it. Uh, it was just really stupid. But 
for the time being, yes, she has it on. And she's giving an example of one of these creatures called the Scrawl, which are these very green-like creatures that we learn later on that can uh, change their look to look like any person or creature that they want to. Uh, so, it does this another weird cut where uh, we're looking into her past again, uh, and, cause she gets, like, knocked out by the scroll, uh, when they encounter, uh, and now all of a sudden she's, like, living through her past or just seeing it, but there's, like, again, it is just so bizarrely cut, I feel. I feel like we should have known in a way... Other than, like, we hear voices, I guess that's the interpretation of, like, oh, she's, like, someone's talking to her through her memories or something. I it is, again, it is really weird. Uh, maybe I just didn't fully understand what they were trying to go for. They were trying to, I know what they were trying to achieve, they were trying to get information, but it was just the way it was presented that definitely felt, again, very wonky. That is just going to be a word I'm going to say a lot in this movie review. Very wonky. Okay, now that we got our word out of the way, uh, I guess you can have a word counter if you want to make fun of me. Uh, go ahead. I don't care. Uh, so, uh, we cut to her after this little bit. Uh, she manages to escape uh, via learning that she can burst out with her powers, I suppose. Um, but they had gotten the information, I, I think they also did get the information. And we cut to her, uh, meeting up with her squad, I guess. Um, and again, we just sort of, kind of just go start going on missions with them. We don't know anything about this unit of people she is with, other than one of them, I think. Uh, one of the actors, I forget which one it is, the black, I know it's one of the black guys, there's, I think there's like two black guys there, um, and I, f I swear this guy was in one of the Thor movies, I just don't remember which one, because I only seen Thor 1 anyways, and I, I don't remember Thor 3 anyway, I think I've seen Thor 3, anyway, yeah, or Thor Ragnarok, I think, is Thor Ragnarok the third one? Oh god, I'm starting to misremember the movies, it, Anyway, um, so yeah, she's suddenly sort of just with this group now, and we sort of just skip over to, like, them just kind of doing their thing. Again, we don't really learn anything about these people that she's with. All I know that, um... They end up on this other planet, I think it's called Torfa. I wrote that down, so I hope I got that right. Um, they start to search, and it did look a little bit dark. I, maybe it was just, I don't know, a little bit dark on that planet. Uh, and they seem to separate. I don't know how the, the separate went down, but um, there's like the sniper there that was like, against them, but with them. It's really weird. Um, and they're, uh, you know, they're making their way there through this pod, and then their communications start getting messed up, and then all these creatures interact with them, and then they get ready to attack, and then there's, like, two altercations, and then the altercations get pretty big. Um, including one of the snipers being attacked, or the sniper being attacked. Um, and again, I think there's just a bit of, like, rushing through this moment, um, definitely. Um, like, it was really hard to tell who was on what side. Um, I don't know who the sniper's side was on at this particular moment, like, for example. Um... Because it looked like she was about to, like, shoot one of the alien-like creatures, but, like, one of the men from the group went in front, and then she, like, tried to shoot at him for some reason? I don't know. It's really weird. Um, 
But we cut back to Marv. Uh, he's like doing her own thing separate from everyone else. And she gets caught, captured. Um, and yeah, they're trying to go after the other teammates or whatever. Um, so the team like gets like uh, I don't know if they got caught or not. <laughs> anyway, it like cuts to more probing of her memories, which again I feel like they just did this, um, and trying to pinpoint a specific set of information things. She like meets her like former friend from a former life or before all of this like she has the memory issues in the beginning um uh, younger even younger back when she was like growing up uh so she was i guess from earth i guess she's an earthling that became so she's sort of like the equivalent i suppose like the more serious equivalent of the main character from guardians of the galaxy quill i think it was his name i'm sorry if that's not his name i think it's quill um, it's been a month, it's been a minute since I've seen, uh, the Avengers movie, so I do apologize if I'm not as caught up as I should be in my mental memory of all these other films that I need to keep up with or whatever. Um, so yeah, she gets, like, more probed or whatever. Um, let's see. So... We get, we see, like, again, she's being sort of messed with, and this appears to be, again, some sort of memory bank. Uh, it shows, like, her, like, band, ro like, some sort of rope challenge or something. Um, it shows her being a kid, stuff of that nature, uh, and talking to some specific woman that we learn about later. And then she's like seeing the same woman over and over again and they're trying to like position it so they can see something specific. Um, so, uh, and she's told to focus on that name and then she gets the name, finally. Uh, and we cut to this woman uh, with a gun uh, Marv, uh, and, uh, this other person, scroll, I put scroll guy? Oh, scroll, as in the creature, scroll, um, has this, like, gun, uh, and, like, it's, like, ready to do something, and, uh, she makes her escape a second time, And she's, like, woken up with, like, uh, these lasers holding up her head, like, the memory thing ended, and now she's awake. And she's seeing the scrolls, like, talk to each other. Uh, and they're, like, taping their memories, and she breaks out again. Um, again, I, I don't know if, like, if my notes from earlier, like, are messed up, or if that actually happens in the movie, I feel like... I, f I do feel like the first time my, my notes are either out of whack or maybe that happened twice. I honestly don't even remember the beginning. Like, some of the... I do know that that happens at least once. I'm going to confirm that it happens at least once, okay? Anywho. Uh, so, bad guys, you know, they're doing their thing. Uh, they, they're sort of holding back. Um, and we learn later on as to why they did that, I guess. Um, hold on, I'm a little bit lost in my notes here. Give me a second. Uh, there we go, waking up, yep, yep, yep. Okay. So, they learned that the doctor that they are looking for, yes, they are looking for a doctor, a Dr. Larson, uh, because she built some sort of device, I forget what the device is um, specifically, but they're looking for something more specific, a part of that device, which I'm, gonna, I'm just going to spoil now. It is the Tesseract, or Tesseract, or however you say that word. Um, I think it's Tesseract. 
what's a T? I don't know. At the end, I don't know. Um, I forgot what how they pronounce it. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, she ends up fleeing, as I said. Uh, let's see. Uh, she does some more action stuff, like she's fighting, fending off from these uh, incoming attacks. Uh, she sort of makes her way out, blasts the cuffs off finally, and is able to essentially open up a, a way out. Uh, she, I wrote that she has a mask on for some reason, but that one almost caught me off guard, but that one gets answered later on, which I'm a little glad that they did at least make sense of why she suddenly had a mask on. Uh, but at the time, it seemed really confusing, so at least they answered that question. Uh, so she busts her way out, and um, we see uh, the pods being like invaded by the scrolls, or the, the scrolls are like looking around or whatever. Um, she manages to get out. I think I, I, I put it in a way where it seemed like it didn't make absolute sense. Um, but she, like, ends up, like, messing with the controls or whatever. Oh, yeah, as she's, like, leaving for her pod, uh, she's, like, she, like, punches it, and then, like, she's able to, uh, go through space with this really messed up craft. So, um, yeah, that craft ends up taking her to what is referred to by them anyways as planet 53 which again in, in other terms that is just earth i don't know why they didn't just call it for us earth and just refer to it as 53 for them again a little bit of a cluster mess or a minor mess or minor mistake i guess i don't know um you can also count the amount of times of I say, I don't know. <laughs> I think I've already said that, like, four times. Um, anyway, she runs into product placement, uh, Blockbuster, uh, and then the other one was something else. Um, but she like at, she's, like, looking for, like, a way to make contact with her leader, her former leader, the one she had potential relationships with. I don't, again, I don't know. Um, and I'm going to wait. Okay, I done froze. Okay. Um, she essentially meets up with, uh, or goes into a Radio Shack, another product placement store, and um, looks for... Uh, a way to make contact there. Meanwhile, on the beach we see that the scroll have landed also on Earth. Uh, they disguise, they start disguising themselves as humans and they are looking for uh, the doctor at this point, I think. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we cut back to Marvel, or Marv. Uh, you know, I'll say Marvel. Uh, whatever. <laughs> It, seem, it does seem, sound a little bit odd to say Marv. So Marvel uh, meets up with, um, or talks to uh, her potential boyfriendish friend leader. <laughs> Again, I, I don't know what his name is anyway. Um, and, yep. Um, so we meet... Samuel L. Jackson's character, uh, Nick Fury, and when I first watched, or, or first started watching this film, um, I didn't know that it was supposed to take place before everything until Samuel L. Jackson arrived as Nick Fury. He arrives with both of his eyes. So, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, this is actually taking place before everything, I guess. And uh, just a little bit of an interesting thing I noted uh, in my notes. Uh, if you look behind Captain uh, Marvel, uh, you can see these posters in the background that say BVS. And I was like, 
Batman versus Superman. <laughs> Whoops! Didn't catch that one? I don't know. Yeah, there are a bunch of posters that just say BVS. I don't know if anyone caught that. Uh, I did. Yes, I, I thought that'd be a fun little tidbit to throw your way if you haven't seen the movie. I guess you can look out for that now. Um, so, anywho, uh, Marvel explains who she is and what is coming after her, and uh, Fury is like, what's me? What's going on? What is this going on? And ask if she is a shapeshifter as uh, he thinks that, you know, she goes over all that stuff and she's like, eh. I mean, he's like all like, eh, are you a shapeshifter? I don't know. So, after that, um, she gets fired upon by this guy. I think this was supposed to be a scrawl in disguise. He ends up, like, disguising himself, or he was already in human form as this guy in, like, pretty basic yellow and black attire. Um, and she gives chase to this particular fellow onto this train, uh, where she bumps into this old woman and, after giving her a certain glare, uh, fights with her because she ends up being one of the scrawl. Um, so they're fighting on the train, um, and then the scrawl goes to hide again, and then we hear a certain little chittering or repeating of a certain line. And as we see the no newspaper laid down, we see that it is a Stanley cameo. Once again, rest in peace, Stanley. Uh, but as we move past that, as uh, Marvel moves, moves past him and gives him the little smirk, uh, she's making her way through the little train carts. Uh, she sees him. Uh, change into his original form, which he, for whatever reason, waited for her to catch up. I don't know why. He would do that. It is stupid. Um, and then they fight on top of the train, and Nick Fury is watching from below in his car with, um, I know, I don't know the other guy's name. He's like one of the, um, other people that work for S.H.I.E.L.D., he's the one that died in one of the Avengers film, and everyone's like, oh no! And then he like had a series of his own for a while, it's like Carter, I want to say? I don't know if that's his actual name, I'm just gonna... I don't know. Uh, anyway. So we see that that goes down, and he's giving chase. Uh, but he ends up being in the car with a fake one, anyway, and fights it off to see that it was also a, uh, a scrawl. So Marvel gets off the train, and then she enters off the subway, uh, entering into this world she does not fully understand, or did understand, forgot to understand, and must relearn to understand, I suppose, if you want to be accurate. So, uh... We learn, or we learn, I suppose, that F Fury is a part of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, already at this point, obviously. Uh, and Marvel uh, is, like, booping her arm device to see the past events. I, I don't know how that happened. Did she, like, download that onto her arm device at some point. I don't know if there was, like, any indication of how she got that information about her past. But, yeah, she gets information about her past. Um, and then she makes her way to a search engine. Uh, and computers were slow at the time, so it's like, haha, slow computers or whatever. Uh, and it suddenly cuts to this, uh, map and some random biker guy, like, like, she's outside with the map and looking at it, and some random guy, like, f flirting on her for, like, a moment? And then he's like, eh, I'm gonna go inside. So she proceeds to, uh, take some clothes from this mannequin, and then proceed to s take this guy's bike. Uh, we then cut to the scroll, and, uh, Nick Fury and some random scientist... Or a random scientist guy at the time. Um, 
I don't know if he's relevant to anything, really. Um, and this obvious evil businessman, from the moment he walks in, it's like, oh, that guy's obviously... There's something up with this guy, obviously. Uh, I saw it, I said that as soon as I saw the guy walk in, I did such things. Uh, anyway, uh, so Fury wants to uh, essentially get rid of the Skrull, and he's like saying he wants her help, but being Marvel, obviously. Um, and the business guy, like, or one of the, or the doctor leaves, I think. Or one of them leaves, I don't know. And we see um, the evil businessman Lee uh, lean in into this dead body of one of the Skrull and, like, essentially start sniffing it so we already know that something's going on with this guy. Um, and this, we cut to Marvel starting her travels. So she heads on to this different unnamed store this time. And she gets um, more flashes of like where she's like been here before. Uh, she's like seeing this plane. She's like asking about it. And out of nowhere, Fury pops in. How did he know that she was there? I don't know, but he does. So the two start chatting it up. Uh, and he like, and she's like trying to figure out if he's suddenly a scroll, and then he starts talking about his past and stuff of that nature. And to explain how she's her, she blasts through the wall using her powers, and I guess that's all she needed to do. I don't know. Um, probably would have been a great moment to uh, explore some backstory, maybe a uh, developer character. No, just go blast the wall. Okay, okay. Uh, big issue with this movie, definitely the just showing clips of little girl moment, little girl moment, older girl moment, older woman moment, older woman, older woman moment in a separate job. It leaves a little bit desired uh, in some respects, obviously. Um, I mean, they try to make a point of it later, but I, I don't know, like... I don't know if, like, holding off on that for that long... Uh, I don't know. I think they definitely hold way too much towards the end of the movie. I definitely think that is also an issue with the movie. So anyways, I do apologize if this review is getting a bit long, but hey. Uh, I, as I said, I wrote a lot of notes. So... Uh, now I'm lost in my notes again. Uh, and he, uh, suddenly knows her name. I don't think they ever introduced each other. Or no, wait, uh, she was asking about him, but he never asked about her, like her name, I don't think. I don't know if she said it or not. Damn, I really don't remember. In my notes, I did say, like, did she give her her name? I don't know. Uh, shit. Uh, if I just missed that one, then that's on me. But there's definitely other moments where it's like, I don't know what's going on. And that wasn't fully explained either, obviously. Um, so she gets... So they decide that the two of them are going to head over to S.H.I.E.L.D. We're going to move on. Uh, or NASA, I guess, is where they're technically heading. Uh, to look for this scientist, doctor or lady. Um, and she, uh, she gets this little neat hat. And uh, she's seeing all this stuff being built. And they're told to wait in this waiting room. And I guess they were going to just leave them there. I don't know. But... Um, Nick Fury starts to work his ID magic, it's the ID, via, like, taping it or whatever, and getting in. Um, she, uh, that being Marvel, sees this cat, and yes, I'm gonna say it now, I know what you're thinking, if you, well, if you haven't seen this movie, why am I bringing up a cat? 
it's very important to bring up the cat, I think. Uh, if you have seen the movie, then you already know what I am talking about. Spoilers ahead. Uh, or further spoilers ahead, I should say. But anyway, just know that there is a cat and it is vital to the story. It is super important to the story. Trust me, we're gonna get there. But anyways, just know that there is a cat and then they move on. Okay? Okay. So, uh, she calls them over, uh, they're moving on to this, like, recording room, um, or this, like, information room, um, and she blasts the door down, kind of mocking him in the process of just being like, ah, I could have done that earlier, or whatever, um, and they start to look for information, and within, I want to say, ten seconds, she's able to find what she is looking for. Wow, not even a jump cut or, like, edits of them looking for information? Okay, I'll just do it in 10 seconds. Whatever, fine. You can have that one, I guess, through extreme luck. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, she, uh, they learned that the doctor was terminated via killed, and they only have this other one person, I believe her name is Maria. I think I called her Mary later on in my notes, but her name is Maria. Um... And then they need to locate her, uh, essentially, and she's a pilot, just to get a basic idea of what she does. Um, so she keeps looking uh, on the information on herself or, or for herself, uh, and she sees the image of this like pilot, uh, and she see she sees herself in one of the earlier pictures that she had, and she gets more flashbacks. So, uh, we see that the leader, uh, talks about, the leader of her group, uh, talks about all these big super secrets. Uh, and he gives her, proceeds to give her more, like, uh, they're talking with her later on, um, and we see the bad business guy, uh, the one we know is a bad business guy, and I'm put going to start putting that in quotes now, because, whoops, did that not pan out later? But that's what I have in my notes, so I do apologize, and I just wanted to make sure that I'm following the sequence of events as I thought they were happening, and then revealing what they are when they happen. So, nonetheless, um... They are, uh, let's see, where am I on my notes? And, uh, one second, uh, oh yes, uh, the bad business guy moves in, says that he wants to talk one-on-one -on -one with Marvel, um, and he's, like, uh, Fury is suspicious of this, See, so he hears that his name is called, like, his full first name is called, and he said earlier in the movie, like, everyone calls me just Fury, so he already knows that something's up. Um, so he tells the scroll that, to, like, go on a different floor, and then starts to frantically search for, uh, Marvel. Um, and then, like, he also mentions, like, Nevada, or, like, some random state that they've been to on some sort of random mission. Um, anyways, he, like, starts to go off to, like, search for her, uh, and Fury's, like, still looking, uh, and then the other cops are on this guy's side, but Marvel manages to dip out of there, uh, with a little assist from that other guy, that other agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., <laughs> again, I don't know his name, um, but she starts to hear that there's trouble afoot and decides to go back, um, so, Fury uh, makes this noise, he like goes in another direction and bumps into the bad business guy and they end up fighting, he ends up winning, that being the bad business guy, and he reveals he's one of the, uh, obviously, it's not really much of a surprise, I think he, re yeah, he reveals that he's a scroll. no shock. Um, and he takes over the fight, essentially. Uh, but he gets like, blasted away by Captain Marvel, or just Marvel. Uh, whatever. Uh, anyway. Uh, the two of them flee on the scene as... Oh, I did write his name! The other agent, Colton, that's what his name was. 
Uh, and I do apologize, it took me forever to get to that point. Uh, or just his name, at the very most. I know people get Mo Lancey in the pantsy if I don't... Well, no one, no, that's not true. No one cares. Uh, no one enjoys my reviews, and I do, I do apologize if this one's getting on the lengthy side. Anywho. Uh, she takes the, uh, this, uh... I, I put calm, I don't know, uh... So, the new scrawl, or I put BB scrawl, bad business scrawl, uh, <laughs> uh, heads up. I don't know if they ever gave him a name. I think they do, but I, I just didn't catch his name in particular, or this particular scrawl that they keep encountering throughout the movie, by the way. Um, so, she leads them um, to the, or she ends up in this, like, large room with this large S-plane. She goes in, she manages to get out. Um, and then the cat's there! That cat just ended up in the plane somehow. And yes, I'm gonna keep saying, that cat is super crucial to the plot. They end up calling this cat Goose. I don't know why, but whatever. Uh, so she gives Fury the pick sees the, the pics that she took out earlier, the one from six years ago, uh, with when she had, like, red her hair. Um, so she wants to meet, uh, toward, uh, you know, make their way towards, um, the next location. Anywho, uh, the leader, her leader, uh, calls... Uh, I don't even know his name. I think it's like Ronin. I think that's his name. The main bad guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, the first one. Um, and I'm just gonna say it. His presence here utterly doesn't do any justice. And I'm gonna say why it works in Guardians of the Gar Galaxy and why it doesn't work here. You see, Ronin is a very, like, he's a very... He's the very straight man, if you will. He plays everything uh, very down to fact. This is what this is. This is what I'm going to do. I'm the bad guy, but I'm taking things 100% seriously. And the reason why that works and why it's so comical in the Guardians of the Galaxy is that it plays really well off against Quill, who's very charismatic, very energetic, does a dance battle to, like, confuse the hell out of him. Again, that range of... Quill's personality against his very, like, serious tone, that's what makes this villain work so well. But because Marvel herself doesn't quite reach Quill's personality, per se, it's like, it's like if you took Quill's personality and toned that down, like, I want to say at, at least 20%, maybe? I don't know if there's, like, a percentage, I should say. But about that, I guess... Uh, as to, like, that is what her character is. Like, there's a bit of smug, a bit of attitude, but yeah, and I'm checking something, that's why I'm looking over here real quick. Um, sorry about this. I should have done this sooner. Oh, uh, hold on. I do apologize. Sorry if you can see my bed or whatever. I need to write something. Whoops. Anywho, uh, sorry about that. I'm just waiting to see if something happens. And if it does, I will, um... Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut this review for now, uh, so this is gonna be really confusing. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna remember where I was, and I'll see you guys in the cut. See ya in the, in, in the cut. Hey guys, back after a day of, uh, stuff. Anyways, back to the review, and I apologize if I'm a little bit off of where my notes are. But I think where I last left off is talking about uh, 
her arriving at the uh, woman's house, so I think I'll start off from there and just edit it together regardless. Anywho, uh, let's see. So, uh, Marvel uh, looks, gets there, uh, and she's like showing off uh, to uh, Maria's like daughter, and they're just chilling about. And uh, she gets some solo time with Maria, and it's probably the best part of the movie is these little the, mo the two moments between these two characters in particular, sp specifically with Maria. Um, <clears throat> and they're going over what happened, and it does start off with some more exposition, but it does get more emotional. So again, that's why I do believe that those two scenes where they are talking are the most potent of the parts of the movie. Anyways, uh, the daughter calls them over to show um, more pictures from Marvel's past, and we get a montage of her showing them a bunch of pictures, or showing her a bunch of pictures. Uh, thus, Marvel changes her uniform to be this color, I, I, uh, but she also gives her a jacket. Um, and they get a knock on the door. So she opens the door and their neighbor uh, talks to them and um, she ends up like calling him Talos, I think that his name was. It ends up being a scrawl, uh, I assume. Um, but one of them ends up going behind and um, the mom sees that there's a fake version of herself outside, so there's obviously the scroll outside with the daughter. Um, and then he starts to say how, like, oh, we're the good guys, we want to help you. And then they start to recall that six years ago, um, like, they try to catch her up with all that stuff, and then the scroll wants to, uh, have them help each other. It turns out that all of this chasing is suddenly jumped to oh we want your help it's a little bit again i'm gonna ref i'm gonna use this word again it's a bit wonky the transition from oh we were your enemies and now oh we want your help it does seem a little bit um there does seem to be a huge leap in logic there it does feel like a complete 180 if anything um so, yeah, that does happen. So, um, let's see. So the scroll wants their help. And we see that the cat comes out of nowhere again. The cat's important. Just remember, I've said that twice now. Uh, the cat named Goose. I still don't know why it's named that, but whatever. So, Marvel uh, uses uh, the cat to scare the scroll. Apparently, they are afraid of this cat. Uh, but, uh, anyways, the daughter sees that these are scroll as well, and she's like, eh, whatever. Uh, so, they meet up to essentially talk about what's going to go down. And. Uh, we cut to, like, another area where, like, uh, we're seeing all the flashback stuff in sequence, essentially, at one point. Uh, we see that the, uh, the, her boyfriend, I still don't know what their relationship is, uh, even after, uh, but the ex-boyfriend or friend or whatever ends up being like the main bad guy we see that he ends up like working for Ronin um, she finds out that the doctor that they were looking for had blue blood which I don't know what that in even insinuates I don't know if that means she was a scrawl too or something I don't know um, the dark the doctors like code name was Marvel which is I guess where they got that name from um, so, uh, she sees, uh, again, the, that leader character, um, 
wanting to essentially do some stuff. And this I did put in my notes, and I do want to touch on it now. I do think that they kind of use her memories as a plot device. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, I'm just... That is kind of what it is at this point. Um, so she blows up this energy core with the gun uh, in the flashback, and this, uh, the energy from within the core uh, blows up in her face, uh, and that being Marvel, uh, and this is apparently how she got her powers from this energy core, or part of the Tesseract, I suppose, technically. Um, or a part of the Infinity Gem. Uh, I forget which one it is, but there's power there, essentially. So her eyes turn to blue or white or whatever color it is, and then she passes out. So the leader, uh, after getting like knocked out or whatever, gets up and then um, it ends with like this uh, the, the sniper coming out as well. Uh, we cut back to Marvel heading back outside and uh, seeing that she was lied to. So uh, we learn more about, by the way, we're back in the present. The scroll uh, talks about how this planet was destroyed and how uh, this was all thanks to that leader guy. And he wants to pick up uh, where Marvell's, or the doctor, I'll just say the doctor, uh, skulls were. So, Maria wants to help out, essentially, uh, and the core is still out there somewhere, and that, that did kind of confuse me when I first heard it, um, considering, and I don't think they did a good job of explaining it, because I was still very confused after they say, like, the core is still somewhere out there, um, Anyways, uh, Marvel, again, Mary steps up to help uh, Marvel remember who she is, again. Um, they hug it out. And he wants, uh, the leader wants her power of her memory or whatever, I guess. Um, and the daughter... Uh, convinces Maria to join in because she was still a little bit hesitant at this point. So Marvel uh, suits up and talks with the daughter and as I mentioned earlier I kind of get that out of sequence. Uh, she helps her change the costume to this one but I think they may have made references to other uh, costumes because they go through a, a few of them. I'm not 100% sure but I'm just going to assume that for now. I don't know. Um, so, yes, uh, she goes and she gets that suit that we see. So, she wants uh, to talk with the leader, and very quickly we see that it is a scroll fake out of uh, the leader coming into Earth, uh, asking her questions, and then she answers or doesn't answer one wrong, then the scroll gets shot. And then the leader kills him, or her, or whatever. Um, so, uh, Ronin calls in for like an update. Meanwhile, Marvel, uh, Mary, and uh, Fury all go up to space, and the cat is with them. Very important. And the scroll is also with them. Um... Marvel essentially uh, helps uncloak the ship left behind by the Doctor. Uh, they reach the core, which again, I, as I mentioned earlier, is indeed the Tesseract. They put it in a lunchbox. Noise starts to happen, and we see that various other scroll scrolls uh, come out from uh, the parts of the ship. And it turns out the main scroll, the one that joined them essentially, uh, ends up being a father. He has a, a loving wife and a, day, a, a dear old children. I don't know what they are, but whatever. Um, so more of them come out. Uh, they're like all happy and stuff. 
and um, they say that there are even more Skrull out there somewhere in the universe. That they are all split up for various re or a reason. I don't know if they explained it that well. Um, but the new bad leader, the one that used to be with her, arrives uh, and finds them somehow. Um, I don't even know how he found them. I assume it's the thing that, uh, I don't know, they don't, they never technically explain it. I'm just taking my best guess at this point of how they, how he found it, them. Um, so he wants, a set, he essentially wants the Tesseract. Uh, so the, uh, Marvel gets her powers removed, uh, and then, uh, she still has the neck device on, and, um, she essentially, uh, is trying to still fight on, but he knocks her out, um, and this could have been a perfect opportunity for him to kill her if that was his goal, but I guess it wasn't, I don't know. Um, so it cuts to Marvel in this sort of vision-like place where, like, this music is playing, and then she gets met up with, uh, the Doctor, or a, a, a semblance of the Doctor, or, like, a, this weird thing. Uh, they, at this point of the movie, they, uh, the people that are taking over, or the creatures that are taking over, uh, they put the cat in the cage, and they call it something else. I don't remember what the name of it was officially. Like, they scan the cat, and they see that it is not a cat. It is something else. I don't know what the name is. Uh, so keep that in the back of your minds, because I told you that that cat was super important. And, uh, they also check Fury. They scan him as well. Uh, again, in my notes, I kind of... We emphasize that Marvel at this point still didn't have uh, remove her device. Uh, Marvel attempts to attack this woman, but she ends up like blubbing, and she ends up like blubbing against the wall with blub walls. Um, and she's like shown more clips about her, um, and this allows her to get even more flashbacks. Uh, Marvel says her real name, which I did write, it is indeed Carol, if I mentioned that earlier. Thank goodness, if I didn't, there it is. Um, so she walks, uh, she starts to walk past this blub beam. I, I don't know how else to describe this thing that she's being shot with. Uh, meanwhile, Fury and uh, Mary are escaping. And Marvel is finally able to power up with the pow power of her past uh, taking off. And then she finally takes that stupid thing off of her neck. Now! Uh, it is ridiculous why they had to take so long to do the most obvious thing that she could have done in any other part of the movie. That's still kind of really stupid. Um, so yes, the power th flows through her. And she uh, is able to glow and blast her way into the reality. Um, so she grabs the Tesseract and joins the other. Um, the cat, as they are fleeing, uh, reveals that it has tentacles that can come out of its mouth like a Resident Evil monster. It's the best way I can describe it, like the more recent ones, the ones with the, uh, again, the tentacle uh, things that come out. Um, in my notes, I believed I just called it a hentai cat <laughs> at one point. Um, yes, it is able to use its tentacle-like power to essentially, uh, swallow the Tesseract. Uh, Marvel, uh, uses her super, uh, form to help her allies. She blasts them down, the hentai cat helps them out some more, using its tentacle-like party power to take out some more baddies that are coming their way. And then as uh, Marvel is battling her former allies, uh, this really bad music that doesn't fit this action scene starts to play. It just feels really, really off. Um, and 
some of the things that happen in this fight, I think, were trying to be comical. Like, there's one part where one of the characters uses what looks like a Nerf gun. Um, uh, again, I, I think that, again, this movie kind of gets a little bit confused even this far in the movie um, of what it's trying to do. So, Fury and Mary get stopped again, and um, Marvel uses... She's, like, still going at it on her own, using what I thought looked like an Iron Man move. Um, and then she, like, blasts outward like this. Um, Fury uh, moves, uh, sees the, uh, sort of gains uh, help with the, um, the, the leader scrawl at some point. So Marvel starts to fight the leader a bit. And the scrawl helps the others to safety. And, um, the, she, uh, Marvel starts to essentially set up for a distraction while the others leave with the Tesseract in hand. Uh, the scroll leave, but their leader gets shot oh so conveniently. Um, by the way, the leader somehow got to them even after only fighting Marvel. I don't know how that ended up happening. Um, so the former ex-leader guy and the sniper are still there. And Marvel uh, stops him temporarily. And then uh, he like makes his way out to space or whatever. And then it shows, it, as I mentioned earlier, super super early in the pre-cut, I suppose, that uh, her mask actually automatically comes on. Uh, and that allows her to essentially breathe in space, so she go, she heads out following their ship. Uh, starts to get more control of her power. Uh, Mary shoots down, or helps take care of one of the, uh, sniper, the main sniper lady. Uh, their ship is now being attacked, that being Fury and Mary, as they're trying to make their way out. But his ship ends up being the one that gets the bad bumps. So, um, some blue, some of these, more of these ships appear, and uh, Ronin is uh, getting ready to send some nukes as they start to hurtle, turtle, hurtle toward Earth. Uh, Marvel ends up like rushing down there, uh, throws one back, causing a chain reaction of nukes to head off and. Uh, avoid catastrophe on Earth, and they say to he says to leave because they want to get stronger and get back to get her. And uh, Marvel continues to do her thing up in space or whatever, uh, which is what leads for them to again essentially do that. So she returns to Earth when they leave, uh, returns to the bad leader where he was, and he's like trying to get her, uh, you know, do his thing. So they slow-mo walk toward each other in the desert, and the leader says, oh, I'm so proud of you, uh, you know, why don't we do this proper one-on-one? -on -one? He like drops his gun thinking like, yeah, he'll, she'll do that. And then she totally just blasts him away with her blast. Uh, and she's like, yeah, I don't need to prove anything to you. Whatever, whatever, fuck you. So she sends him back um, to send a message to the others that she's going to fix all that stuff on her planet. Um, so Fury gets the cat back the hentai cat back and then he's like now nah, I'll take good care of you and then like the cat scratches his eye and that alone is what causes him to lose his eye um so she um I think Marvel and her talk about it talk about like what's gonna happen um the groups talk like when they're all reunited, Marvel says she'll help find the scroll home. Um, uh, Fury goes back to his office, kind of keeping his uh, lost eye confidential. 
uh, Marvel and Fury uh, talk about this one song, which is where the word phrase Marvel comes from, I suppose. I don't know. Um, so she shows him the the, cloak, the device that she had. She gives it to Fury, which um, is how he had it in that other movie when he before he went. Uh, so that's how that happened. Uh, the daughter gives her this jacket. Again, I assume that's a part of more of her uniform she has later on in one of the comics. So Marvel says goodbye and flies off with the Skrull to help them find out their planet. Uh, cuts to Fury, uh, given a bunch of these eyes and, um, what was his name? The other S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, I know, Colander, Colander, something, I don't know. Um, he, like, is trying to help him. He's like, oh, where's the Tesseract? I don't know. So, uh, he was, at this point, he's starting to write the initiative program uh, as he, like, locks up the eyes. And he's talking about how there are other, there may very well be other, well, be, uh, there very well may be other threats in space. And that he wants to, of course, find other heroes like her. Uh, I don't know if this little ending bit was in the first Avengers. It feels like, I don't know, like a lot of the stuff seems very familiar to me, but I don't know. Um, so she, he starts to look at the picture that uh, he had left, she had left him. Uh, sees that the plane is named Avenger, uh, and that's how he gets the name. Changes it to the new name, and then the movie ends. But of course, there's the post credit sequence when we see uh, the little device thing uh, popping off, sending a signal, and seeing the, re the remaining crew, crew try to figure it out, only to see that she is now there instantly. And then we see the uh, hentai cat uh, cough up the Tesseract, and that was Captain Marvel. Oh boy, um, this movie definitely had quite a few issues, um, there's definitely some deeper things they could have explained, explored, and even in some parts acted a little bit better and written a little bit sh stronger. Um, it definitely has some weird moments of like, Okay, now we're gonna have these segments of flashbacks, story, story, story. Now we're gonna have these segments of flashbacks, story, 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 flashbacks, and then it gets a little bit wonky. Um, again, um, even the action seems a little bit to be desired um, toward the end. There, I do think some of some of it's good. But again, I think some of it was, again, someone literally shoots Captain Marvel with a what appears to be a Nerf gun. So, I don't know what they were going for with that little bit. But, um, uh, um, and it sucks. I think this movie could have worked. Um, and I think it, it, it feels, it so feels like they rushed this movie out. It definitely feels like this is a so rushed movie because, um, the next Avengers is coming out relatively soon-ish, and that it sucks because it feels like they rushed this movie because this is a prequel and a also a and at the end of the movie a setup to some of the stuff that's probably gonna happen in Avengers Endgame. I think that's what it's called. Um, and I think Captain Marvel as a movie suffers because of that. It it definitely feels like it was very very rushed. Um, they couldn't flesh out every single detail, um, and because of that, I'm going to give this movie a 5 out of 10. I think it's a halfway decent movie. Um, there are definitely a lot of elements they could have uh, beefed up if, you know, they weren't in a rush to get out uh, Endgame, and uh, I think that it could have definitely succeeded if it 
uh, just sort of reorganized and reshifted some of these ideas, built on some of these ideas, built on some of the characters, built on the action in it of itself. Um, and yeah, that's how I feel about the movie. And that was my review of Captain Marvel. And if you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One of them will head you over to my Discord server, and the other will head you over to my Patreon page. Any donations are greatly appreciated. And until next time, everyone, bye-bye.